Sunday morning, we're not at church. <laughs> we're not at church, but I had to start there and it'll all come together for you. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you had to tell yourself it was gonna be okay? Anybody? You didn't look like it was gonna be all right. You didn't feel like it was gonna be all right, but you had to speak to your circumstances and speak to your situation to say, you know what? I got this and I gotta keep going. So although we're gonna talk about awakening the mature geek, I need to take you through this process of three levels of surrender that I had to go through to get to this place. So, years ago, I graduated from Wayne State University. I say go Tartars, I don't know anything about these warriors. I was a Tartar, it was a long time ago, 20-something um, years ago. But I started off my career in technology by mistake. When I graduated from Wayne State, I was an aspiring mortician. I worked at Swanson's Funeral Home. Anybody know about Swanson's? Swanson's Funeral Home. <laughs> I did a little freelancing up at Peace Chapel on Seven Mile. And I thought in my life, this was what I was going to do. This is what I was meant to do with my life. I could help you embalm people. I could sing at the funeral. I could pray, do the eulogy. I could do it all. <laughs> Just saying, I was all that. But for me, <laughs> that was gonna be the trajectory of my life. This is what my life was gonna be about. So, someone called me and said, hey, there's a company called CompuWare Corporation. You can learn to program in 13 languages in seven, seven languages in 13 weeks. I said, okay, now don't get me wrong. It wasn't because I was a techie. I didn't know anything about technology. All I knew was that they were gonna pay $24,000 and I was gonna be rich. <laughs> My mama sitting over there and I can leave her house and she couldn't tell me what to do anymore because I was gonna be rich. So I did that, but the first surrender came with that. I had to surrender my identity because I thought I knew what I was gonna do with my life and I was going to embalm people and I was going to empower the people who were living because one thing I knew for sure on my path, empowerment was all I know that I was put on this life, th this earth to do. So that was what I was gonna do. So I surrendered my identity, which was really tough. But I found myself on top of the world. And with technology, I got a lot of C's behind that. I became a CDO. So two times in my life, I have been a global chief diversity and inclusion officer for two Fortune 500 companies. I was the chief information officer for the city of Detroit. My team and I coordinated all the technology behind Super Bowl 40, thank you very much. And I've been a two-time tech CEO. But now, when you're on top of the world sometimes, you get a little bit conceited, and I did. And so I said, diversity and inclusion is what I'm all about, women in tech, but I'm getting off the freedom bus. I'm not doing this anymore. I got money. I'm done. But then this happened. So this is the dress that I have on now. I'm surprised I can still fit it. But during this, in this, I felt that I was like on top of the world. I was on MSNBC. I had a regular TV show on Channel 4. I'm traveling all over the world, but what you, what you don't see is that I couldn't afford gas to put in my car. I didn't know if I could buy groceries or buy my child's shoes. When they repossessed the car, I didn't need gas anymore, but still. Because <laughs> that happened too. Foreclosed on my house, and marriage number two was done. 
So I had to then surrender to my truth. I wasn't living my truth. I was living a lie. I looked so good on the outside, but on the inside, it was a hot freaking mess. But once I was able to surrender to my truth, my life started to change. So this is me on the beach or Belle Isle or somewhere, surrendering to my truth. <laughs> <laughs> and when I surrendered to my truth, a th few things had to change. My words and thoughts were not aligned. I need to get them to align. People, there were some people in my life who had to kick rocks. You could not be around me anymore. Places, there were some places I couldn't go. Sorry, sores, I can't go hanging out with you. The how, I knew there was something else better for my life. I just didn't know how. And I had to forget the outcome. Speak what you want, but how you get there is not your business, Marlon. So here we go, fast forward. Techonomy called and said, we want you to speak at a conference. This is when I realized that my network was tied to my self-worth. I'm like, why would you want me there? But I went, and on this stage is where Sisters Code was born. They said, what are you going to do to help out Detroit? And I said, well, I'm starting this organization called Sisters Code. I didn't know what the logo was. I didn't have a company name. I didn't have a business card, a phone. I had nothing. But fast forward, this is our first class where Microsoft Corporation said, we're going to write the curriculum for you, and we're going to welcome all the women there. This is what happened when I surrendered. I didn't need to know the how. This was larger than I could have ever, ever thought in a million years. So my third surrender came was surrendering the I for the we. This is when I realized this is not even about me. This whole journey wasn't even about me. It was about something much greater. It was about this. It was about the 67-year-old grandmother who wanted to do something different with her life, who now came to our class and she creates websites for churches. Yeah, it's about a young lady who had been in a car accident and didn't know what she was gonna do next, but she came to us and said, hey, I'm willing to learn. It's about the numerous women, 350 plus women who have come through Sisters Code to take coding to the next level. So in closing, in your life, if there's something you want to do, I don't know what your surrender is, but my surrender was surrendering the identity, surrendering to my truth, and surrendering the I for we. I know that empowerment is a part of my life and what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I thank you today for allowing me to come out here and share my story and my truth, and hopefully you were empowered. Thank you.